What's up guys? I wanted to share something a little bit. This is maybe just kind of random. Uh, I really have no plan for this, but I was thinking about something. And, um, I remember when I was a kid, my mom would say a lot of stuff um, with regards to the end times. And she would say things which, frankly, were scary at times. Um, but I do remember once she was sharing something and there was this picture. I don't know where she got it. Maybe it was a pamphlet or something that she got. I don't even remember. I mean, I was a kid. I must have been like, who knows, four years old, maybe five. I don't even remember. I mean, I just don't remember much details at all. But I remember her busting out this pamphlet or this piece of paper or this like you know, kind of a fold up piece of paper and it had this like, I think it was a, it was a, I think it was a pamphlet from like a Christian, somebody who went door to door. It might even have been Mormons, who knows, but she got it somehow, probably from some people who went door to door and she decided to use it as an example. And what was in the pamphlet was, um, these pictures of like this pit and this hole and I, I remember thinking at the time, like, is that an earthquake? I wasn't sure, but she was explaining to me how, and, and like, so there's this picture and this hole, and it was like the side view, I guess, from it. Um, and there was this deep cavern, and then there was like a boat, and there was like a camper, and there was like a truck, and all these like th outward things. And, and the message was like, the message of the pamphlet was like, these things are going down eventually you know these things are going to go away they're going to disappear and for some reason that's just always stuck with me my entire life because I've always and it was a great message I don't know she just hit me at the right time and she said it at the right time I guess and it just stuck stuck in my heart and the message that she said was basically pretty much backing up the pamphlet which is like it's all going down you know in the end you can't take your possessions with you. You know, it's, it's all going into the pit. You know, I don't know if that's literally going to happen. I'm not sure, you know, read the Bible enough. I think there's a big earthquake at the end of, at the end times. But, and, and this is not something popular that people like to talk about the end times because it's depressing, right? But I kind of wanted to make the point, you know, that sometimes we do need to stop running and stop just 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 take a rest and, and kind of look around you know and like what kind of figure out what what's going on right why are people doing what they're doing why why is everybody chasing possessions why is everybody chasing money why is everybody chasing quote unquote a better life you know it's just interesting it's interesting uh because we are motivated by that. And it probably has to do a lot with our sex drive. It has to do with like, you know, we want possessions to impress women. But also we want things of leisure to make our lives better. You know, I mean, I've thought about it. I mean, you know, I would, I would like a boat. You know, I would like a home or I would like a vacation home. I'd like a home by the beach and have a boat and go out. I mean, it sounds just relaxing as hell. It sounds awesome. But but you think about how and, and part of her message I think the underlying theme of the message really was you're going to lose your life you, you know you're going to spend a lot of time and waste your life trying to get these things you know and it's, it's, it's just interesting I think it's true you know it's not fully all the way you know not everybody who has a boat has wasted their life to get it that's not that's not cut and dry how, how that always is but it's I guess just the message is like what are we what are we doing here you know what are we planning for what is our future and so I guess it reminds me of a lot of Bible verses and one of the Bible verses is um, you know don't store up your treasures on earth where dust and moths you know come in and consume but store up your treasures in heaven and that's something that I've always had a hard time reconciling, how, you know, how to, because it's like, you want things, you know, and you, you know, I want those cool pair of shoes, or I want this new thing to help me, 
exercise or I want this you know, thing and this thing and this thing. You know, I don't know why we're like that, but we are. And, and it's, you know, it's always been hard for me to reconcile how much time do I spend wanting things that I don't have? How, many time, how much time of my life do I spend, um, you know, planning and plotting f- to get, you know, better or new things? As opposed to how much time do I just enjoy what I have, or how much time do I just how much time do I spend praying, or how much time do I spend with God, or how much time do I spend enjoying the earth that He gave us? You know, um, it, it, it's an it's an interesting juxtaposition how you compare those two things. You know, and it's not that I'm attacking possessions per se, or I'm attacking wanting to improve or have a better life that's not necessarily where I'm coming from I'm just saying like sometimes you gotta back up and take a look around and be like what's everyone doing you know why is everyone running I I always think about that song I think it's called uh, Gangster's Paradise by Coolio and he's he's got this line in there where he says everybody's running but half of them ain't looking what's going on in the kitchen right break that lyric down what does that mean it means everybody's in this rat race everybody and 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 who actually sees what's going on who actually steps back and says hey wait a minute what are we doing where are we going you know why are we always on this constant conveyor belt or on this constant hamster wheel we're really not going anywhere. We're just staying the same. We're not growing as humans. We're not really enjoying. Are we really enjoying life? Are we really, you know, and I guess maybe it's different from culture to culture. I think one thing I always think about, too, is is, is a weird thing to think about, but I always think about um, how they lived back in, like, I'd say pre-1950s, 1960s in America. And and it's weird to notice that like it seems that the poorer they were, in a sense, the happier they were. And you realize like I think the reason for that is because they used to go outside and they used to talk to their neighbors and they used to spend time with people, and family and bonds and relationships meant more than. I mean I don't know maybe it's still like that in some places, but I know that, you know. All I can really say is I grew up in Washington. I'm thankful that I grew up on the east side of Washington for the most part. And then I, well, for sure in the east, but yeah, for the most part. Because I was born in the middle, went to the east side of Washington for most of my youth. And then came to the west side of Washington as a young adult. And when I just became an adult. Which is, so I I basically lived in all three areas of Washington. So I was so in the middle of Washington from zero to, I think, eight years old. And then from eight to 18 in eastern Washington, Spokane. And then from 18 to present, basically, I I went back for a year. But basically 18 to present, um, Seattle area. So I can compare and contrast those three areas. But it's only limited to Washington State. So I don't know. Was it like that in the South still? Is it like that in other places? Is it really like that in smaller towns, more rural towns? Maybe a little bit, but I don't, I mean, I went to Missouri once to visit my dad, who's who's from Missouri. He moved back there and I went down there and it was pretty chill. I consider Missouri to be the South. I guess technically it's Midwest, but I consider it South uh, just by their, you know, the way they talk, the way they behave, their mannerisms, their culture. It's Southern to me. Um, It wasn't, it, it kind of was, but it was, I don't know, because we didn't do a whole, well, we did go out to like a, we did go out to a, uh, kind of a, we, we passed by a concert, I think at one time, kind of a little, you know, indie concert, I guess you'd call it, but there's a lot of different stuff going on, and maybe it was kind of like that a little bit, people would go out a little bit, maybe it's different, and even better in some places, but I just, I always have this romanticized uh, picture of like 1940s, 1930s and how they used to go dancing and how they go out and socialize and all these things and it's like yeah they were suffering and they didn't have two pennies to rub together but they were happy I think and, and they enjoyed each other and they danced and they sang and they had these parties and it's like and it wasn't like today's parties you know it's 
disgusting and stuff type of parties they have now it was like a fun thing kids would go it was a fun thing it, it, was, it was pretty wholesome for the most part not to say there wasn't drinking and carousing or all that stuff I'm sure was there a lot but it's just a different flavor I don't know man um, but it's it's interesting to to notice how like everything is so progressive everything is like oh we always got to have the next thing we always got to be bigger and better and who's really looking around and enjoying what we have now with that said I mean it's like the way the world's going who knows how much time we have left um, but I just kind of wanted to make the point that it just people are so caught up in uh, possessions and uh, progress so caught up in that and it's like they just they sell their soul to it you know and I think you know I think of my own experiences and think about how much time I've um, time I've spent in you know thinking about how much things would be different if, if I had more money or like dreaming of what I could do if I had more money or like you know and you start to realize like man like how how much are we mentally enslaved to improvement or and money and things like that not to say improvement of money is bad in and of itself per se but it's if it sucks away your time and it sucks away your your soul and and your it, it takes you away from really being a real person I think there's so many people out there who've never really developed their characters. They've never developed their personalities. They've never really developed much of, because they don't have time. You know, time is time is a commodity. Time is expensive. <clears throat> and I think that's what a lot of people, I think that's a core reason why a lot of people want to get rich is because they want more time. And they want to they wanna have more free time. But isn't it weird how we exchange chunks of our life, maybe decades, so that we can one day have some free time, we can one day retire, and it's it's messed up, man. I don't know, you know, it's it's complex, it's layered because you know you got to work, you got to make money. But then it goes back to like that's a curse, you know. You look at Genesis, the book of Genesis, and God cursed man. After the, after the Garden of Eden, he cursed mankind. And one, and one of the as, uh, one of the tenets, or not the tenet, one of the things that he cur- can't think of the word. Anyway, I was going to say assets. was not an asset. But one of the things that he was saying during the curse was that you will, you know, you will toil. You will toil the ground. And what he meant by that is, well, now you got to work. <laughs> because before he was taking care of mankind. But it's just, it's interesting to see, like, the real reason I think many people want to get rich is not necessarily because of possessions. That's part of it. But I think the real reason is because they just want free time. They want to be able to live their life. They want to be out from under that stress. They want to be out from under that bowling ball or that ball and chain of having to work to live and survive. I think some people I think a lot of people achieve it but I'd say for the most part most people are enslaved to their careers their jobs they're enslaved to their bills it's very messed up man it's very sad I don't know and so you know for me and my soul like I just I like to look elsewhere man I mean not to say that I never get caught up in wanting to have things that I don't have oh if I just get this thing I'll you know if I get this shoe or this shirt I'll look cool maybe I'll get a girl or maybe I'll attract somebody or maybe I'll just have more respect or like you know this kind of this type of thinking I think that it even the Bible it says that even even Jesus says that in the Bible he says um for these things he says do not be anxious for what you wear and for and for your clothes for these things the Gentiles are you know actively seeking or, or like they're they're all worried about it. It's basically what he was saying. They're real worried about how they look. 
and how they could wear nicer clothes and things like that. But he was saying, don't be like that. He says, uh, what's he say? He says, uh, even, you know, he says, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like a, like a lily of the field or something like that. So it's just, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just, it's crazy what we, you know, what really controls our lives, fear, you know, fear of what will happen, and it's like, again, I'm not, not telling anybody they shouldn't work, or, or, or improve, or wear nicer clothes, per se, it's just, it's just interesting what, you know, what controls us, and we've become like, I mean, we're basically slaves to money, right, we basically are, in one way or another, humans, humans, all humans, even those who are rich, to probably, to some great degree, are enslaved, maybe more enslaved than and regular people, you know, I don't know, man, it's, I guess it can get depressing if you think about it too much, but I, I, I just, I still like that, that picture, you know, it's all going down at the end of the day, it's all going down, and is it worth it to trade our character, is it worth it to trade our personality, is it worth it to trade our soul, our humanity for these things? Or should we go outside and enjoy each other? Should we go outside and enjoy nature? Should we go outside and enjoy, you know, what the earth has to offer? You know, and spend time, you know, enjoying moments as opposed to enjoying things. One of the things that I think went away to, to a great degree after the internet came along and became so popular is the enjoyment of experiences I think you know growing up in the 90s what we wanted to do was just go out and always be outside we wanted to always be outside in the 90s and that's what we did we always went outside I played basketball all day every day I, I, I rode my bike all day every day I go hang out with friends all day every day we just go do cool stuff you know go exploring go swimming at the river you know, people still do that, but it's it's not like, it just doesn't seem like it's, it used to be. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm overreacting, but I feel like since the time of the internet, people just stopped. Something was missing. There's something different in the air. People are kind of glued. People became cyborgs. They're just kind of glued to their phone. They're glued to their laptop. Uh, and I'm no... I'm no exception. I certainly spend way too much time, uh, you know, on the on the internet. But but it, but it is also a tool of, it's a useful tool to get, to improve your life, to get things, to learn. You know, I read a lot as well. Um, but yeah, man, I miss that. I miss the nights. I miss going out and just just being outside and just. That that's that's it. You just you just want to be outside because you don't want to be inside. I mean, what the hell are you gonna do inside? Watch the TV. You know, and I, I'm thankful I didn't grow up with cable TV. My mom almost didn't didn't even let me have a TV, but eventually we got one. And I probably spent way too much time watching stupid shows. But I'm thankful at least they didn't have, have cable because I'm glad I didn't have more options. Because if there wasn't nothing on TV, you got bored and you go outside, right? If there wasn't nothing on TV, you get bored and you go outside. And um, you go figure something out. You go, you go make friends, or you go play a sport, or you go explore something, right? And you didn't, you didn't realize how blessed you were. And 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 I, and I think even the '90s, I think even the '90s wasn't as blessed as say like the '70s or the '80s. I think they went outside even more in the '70s and '80s. Because I think people had less TVs, or there was like more boring shows on. I think TV got better and it got more interesting. Movies got better and got more interesting. I think in the seventies, people were were outside way more, and they and they just really enjoyed they really enjoyed um, playing outside and making friends. And it was just it was a different world. But I don't know if we're. I I just don't think we're ever going to go back to that. It's just too much of a distraction. Social media, what's funny is social media actually isn't very social. <laughs> I mean, technically it is, but it's not the same kind of social. 
how you how you behave and how you interact with people on social media is nowhere how you behave and interact with people in real life so it's not real and I know like Facebook they're trying to make it it's crazy I'm doing these like studies I'm helping meta meta Facebook out by going or well they're using me essentially and they're paying me but I go and I work with them on like virtual reality and um uh, VR basically they're they're trying to I- interface these electronic you know that they're using electronics to sort of cr- create a real virtual reality and they're going to launch it at some point I don't know when but they're basically going to be, be able to strap people up and you're going to be able to meet with people in a virtual reality so it's almost like you can meet with people without actually leaving your home which is insane to think about. So you're gonna see somebody that you know, and you're gonna be able to be in a room with them, but you're not actually in the room with them because it's virtual reality. And you can imagine where that would go and how that could play out in a million different ways. And it's jacked up, it's sad. It's like we're being turned into a video game. We're being literally turned into a simulation by this, as long as you, I mean, sure it's voluntary. They're not, they're not, not gonna make us do it, but people are going to voluntarily get into this virtual reality, and they probably already are, uh, virtual reality, and just check out of real life, which is crazy. So it's, it's like a literal simulated replacement for real life. And again, you can imagine how many different ways that could and will go, right? Anything you can think of that probably will and could go. It literally is the matrix, they're literally trying to plug us into the matrix and it's absolutely insane to think about but i'm doing i'm helping them i'm helping i'm helping them out and they're and they're testing me they're like you know do these hand signals and you know okay put this headset on and like tell us your experience and like tell us this and that and see what you and they're just they're just testing all this crap and they're going to get to a point where it's going to get so good that you don't have to leave your home and you can go interact with all your friends in this virtual online world and it can be whatever you want it to be you can behave however you want to behave and it's all you and you got you know i'm sure it'll be marketed as like freedom or something or like make friends without leaving your house or some crap right and it's in, it's just insane to see that and think they're literally replacing real life with a simulation it's like wow <laughs> They, the, the, you know, how, how many levels to this can we go? We're already a cyborg because we have, we've got a phone and our, we're connected to this virtual world where you can, it has infinite websites, infinite platforms, infinite apps, whatever, you know, it's not, obviously it's not infinite, but we've, we've all got these, these main places we go and we just spend our time in these places even shopping it's insane is it a good thing i think it's good in the sense that you've got options and it makes in a sense it makes your life easier but you got to think about how much time you spend in these places you know and sure it's different for everybody but um it's just weird, man. I don't know. I, I I would go back and I'd prefer the other route. Because I, I, at least, I'm thankful that at least I have those memories. I have that time spent going out and making friends. going And knowing how that works. You know, because I think there's a lot of kids today who don't. Who don't have those experiences of getting into fights or playing baseball. How, how the grass smelled in the morning when you'd go to school and play football before school started or play baseball or softball during recess and how the dirt felt I mean I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure there's a lot of kids who do know how that feels but it seems like it's diminishing it seems like those things are diminishing and they used to be just guaranteed almost they were every kid's experience because you just that's what you did when you were a kid but now it's like, I don't think that's what they do anymore. I think they just stay home and they're just on their games or they're on an app or they're on a website or they're doing this or doing that on all on the computer. And it's sad and I don't know. I mean, if I was going to be a dad, 
I don't have any kids, but if I had any kids, I'd just be outside all the time with my kids, all the time playing sports or playing whatever, building stuff, because that is so, so crucial and so human, you know, and I see these kids growing up in this social world, in this, in this social simulation world, it's not real, you know, social media isn't real, it's not how, how people really behave, it's limited, and they're trying to make it more real, you know, and it's like, you lose out on, on how to be a human, you know, I don't know, I think it's not as bad as it could get, but anyway, but this is all just part of this world that we live in. It's part of the matrix. It's part of this um, system where everything is systematized. Everything is compartmentalized. And um, I don't believe that it's good, ultimately. I think that we're losing the authenticity of the human experience. And we're becoming more compartmentalized... We're becoming more simulated. Everything's a simulation. And I, I just think it's bad. I think that we're we're missing... I think what's really suffering is our humanity and enjoyment. I really think that it's not that enjoyable, but it's addicting. And people say it's a dopamine hit or something, whatever. And then also, you know, you tie that into... It... it, it it intensifies what I talked about earlier, how people are just going after possessions because everything's a click away now. You can see a million shoes, you can see a million cars, you can see a million whatever you like. You see a million houses, a million vacation spots that you want to go to, etc., right? And I think a lot of that we used to get from books and a lot of that we used to get from just going outside. It's an experience to like as a kid to go go to a shopping mall or a, or a commerce area, whatever you want to call it. it. doesn't have to be a shopping mall, but little areas where there's small businesses and go check out this cool antique store. Go in the antique store and look around. And you get the experience of the shopkeeper who tells you hello and who's so nice and knowledgeable and has this kind of wise twinkle behind their eye. And I mean, that kind of crap was real, you know? I mean, you, you think that's just only in the movies. No, you, I experienced that as a kid going into weird shops, going walking around the city, looking at cool things. You know, I'm not saying that's the safest in, in you know, these days. I don't know if I'd let a, I don't know if as a parent, I'd advise a parent to let their kids out and roam. I roamed a lot and I didn't really have any crazy experiences. Although one time I almost got kidnapped when I was, I think I was like six or seven. These, these ladies tried to kidnap me. Thankfully they didn't do so physically. They just asked me if I wanted to go for a ride with them which was crazy to think about because in the 80s there was a lot of kids getting kidnapped I mean I think there still is but anyway uh, yeah be careful about letting your kids out but it, at the same time I'm glad I did have that freedom because you know have you ever been riding a bike and a bunch of dogs start chasing you it sounds scary right but when you're doing it, it there's something in it that's kind of freaking fun and trust me it's terrifying to the core because it's like if I fall, I might be dead. But I had dogs chase me when I was when I was riding my bike. I, I would go take my bike and I would ride down these big hills, and it was super fun. I'm, you know, I remember the excitement I felt. I would go sledding. You know, we we would go to these. Where I kind of grew up in a small town in the middle of Washington, until I was eight. We, we would go to these canals, and there was like. It wasn't actually very healthy because I think there was a lot of toxic runoff from, from the farms. But it was still fun. The water was like super cold and clear. And you, know, you remember stuff like that. And um, I just think that those things are... Kids aren't experiencing those things anymore. And they're lacking humanity because of it. They're lacking love. They're lacking that excitement for life because they're so locked in compartmentalized you know I remember going for walks and seeing the sun and I remember being outside all day long to where I could you know 
I'd be outside and it'd be hot and then like as the day went on I'd see the sun start to set and I'd be like man I've been outside all day I need to go inside and it's just like there's a certain feel there, there's feelings you get from living those experiences that you you don't even know you you could have that type of feeling there's feelings you get you know that you will never experience for instance if you pull let's say you pull up beautiful sunset on Google you could see 10,000 pictures of a beautiful sunset but all of those pictures cannot compare to act the actual feeling when you're outside watching a sunset and that's just so it's so real I remember I was enjoying this sunset not not too many years ago actually Maybe about seven years ago seven eight years ago I was enjoying the sunset and I was in a lake I had I had my feet in a lake and it was a real hot day and there was all these people around and um, I didn't know anybody but I was just standing in this lake and I was watching a sunset and there was just kind of this mirth there was kind of a mirth a kind of joy that we all were experiencing just experiencing this beautiful day you know this beautiful day together and we weren't really talking to each other there was families and they were enjoying they were enjoying the families were enjoying their their children and children were enjoying their parents and people you know it's not like we were all holding hands singing kumbaya but we were also experiencing this thing together and i think people don't even know what that is anymore you can kind of experience it when you're at a concert a little bit yes that's true you can you know experience it when you go out to certain events or maybe to a club to a lesser degree but not really because the atmosphere of a club these days is gross but uh you know you know like a theme park or something you know and like you go and everybody's having fun everybody's sharing this experience and you're not necessarily talking about it but you're all kind of have this shared joy you know and i think that that something like that is really is really kind of going down but uh yeah man um yeah i don't really have a plan i didn't really have a plan for this talk i just kind of wanted to chatter a little bit but um i don't know i hope i hope i can get back to that i hope we can get back to that to some degree and i guess it just depends on where you live and what you like to do and who you're around and you know i think people still do do those things it's just different it's different it's not the same i don't think it's the same as it used to be i really don't you know, our generation's a, a different generation, I, or at least this new generation. I would say Gen, Gen Zers, are different, and whatever comes after that. You know, I'm a millennial, or I'm not a millennial. I'm a, or no, I am a millennial. I was thinking, I'm, I, I, I thought, I thought, I thought I said baby boomer, but no, I said millennial. Yeah, I'm a millennial. Uh, I'd say Gen X probably had it a little better than millennials because they just, eh, in some ways, they didn't actually, but. Maybe millennial might be the best ones. I don't know. I'm sure, every, I'm sure every generation thinks theirs is the best. Uh, but whatever comes after millennial, I think it's Gen Z and Gen, Gen whatever after the Gen Y or something. But man, I feel sorry for those generations in a lot of ways because they just they're so stunted in a lot of ways. You gain a lot when you when you go out and you experience life. But I'd also say. Um, don't take it too seriously. Don't waste your time trying to be so much into possessions. You know, value experiences over possessions. Value people over possessions. You know, value experiences with people over possessions because they're just far better. It's just far better. And I guess you can get that a little bit at like concerts a bit, you know, but man I miss those days I really do I miss those days and maybe it has a lot to do with where I live you know see I think Seattle's a very insulated place for whatever reason people are very very insular here they're very very much not very social they don't really like each other even when they are social they don't really like each other that much it's a weird city I don't really like it I, I, I definitely don't like it I've never I've never liked it I, the only thing really good about it is that it's you know it is a beautiful area. It's a, it's it's a nice looking city, and, and and the area around it. It's not it's not bad. It's not bad on the eyes. You know, it doesn't look run down. It's not crappy. 
I prefer Spokane because I just I like the outdoors. I like the sun. Um, and if I had a lot of money, I would definitely buy a piece of land in the middle of Washington somewhere because there's a lot of cool farmland. Washington's a great state, man, as far as nature and the topography. It's got everything. It's got deserts. It's got a lot of rainy areas. I think it has a rainforest on the on the coast or something, if I'm not mistaken, or, or like a rainforest, almost rainforest. It's probably not a real rainforest, but like it, it, it's a, I think they call it a bo uh, boreal forest or something. It's, it's all, it might even be a rainforest if I'm not mistaken. It's similar to a rainforest. Um, and they got a lot of trees and mountains and they got everything, man. Rivers, lakes. And I just, I hate that I live in an area where I don't really have access to that crap because I wouldn't, I would not swim in this area because I think they dump crap in it. Although I've heard the Spokane River is not great, but I grew up swimming in that. I love that. You know, and it just it gets hot there, and I love the summers because when you're outside and, it, and and it's it's just a drive across town, and you're like at a lake, you know, you're at a river, you're you it's almost like you're in a forest driving, and you can kind of do that a little bit in some areas in Seattle, but it's not, it's just not the same. I don't know, it's not quite the same. But anyways, guys, yeah, I'm just rambling. Uh, I guess maybe that's part of getting older is you, is you got a lot of fond memories of your youth and you miss you miss a lot of stuff and things like that. And I guess it just means that I need to get out more probably to a good degree. Um, but I also do feel like it's hard to make good friends anymore. <laughs> I haven't made good friends in a long time. I had a good friend a couple years ago, actually. A pretty good friend, but... It's just hard, I mean... Because I think people are just... It's, it, 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 you know, everything's a means to an end, it seems like. People don't put relationships on the same level as they used to, it seems like. But yeah, man, what are we pursuing? You know, are we pursuing our personal... Personal possessions? Or are we pursuing something that will last longer? Because... The older I get, the more I feel like, damn, you know, how much time do I have left? 30 years, 40 years, 50 years? If I'm lucky. I mean, I don't think I'll live that long based on certain health issues that I have and based on, uh, I just don't think I'll live that long. From, from the time of, you know, thinking, thinking about the end times and the way the world is going, I don't think we're gonna last another decade. I don't. I don't see it. I'd be surprised if we lasted it until the next, you know, ten years. I'd be surprised if we lasted uh, twenty, thirty, really. But uh, yeah, it just seems like everything's coming to a head. It seems like everything's. Somebody said something that was crazy the other day. They said, um, and I had never thought about it from this angle, but they said, you know, World War I started when a guy was assassinated, when, when a king was assassinated. And they compared it to the assassination attempt on Donald Trump. And what's funny is that we're, we're becoming... Well, let me finish that thought real quick. Uh, so if say Donald Trump was actually assassinated would that have his, his, his question was would that have caused a civil war I think between the, you know the left and the right would that have caused I mean, certainly it would have raised tensions but anyway um, it's crazy to think how desensitized we, we are that happened two that happened two weeks ago. And yeah, people talked about it. We broke it all down. We figured out, yeah, it's probably wasn't how it, how they said it went down, blah blah blah, right? But what's crazy to think about is like we're already moving on. It's old news now. Cause we're so used to crazy events now. We're so used to shootings and, and mass this and, and mass that and uh it's like we're desensitized. We're really desensitized. Oh, there's a war here and there's a war there. It's like nobody even cares that there's a war. I mean, like people might not even know anymore there's a war still going on in Ukraine. 
people not, might not realize the war between Israel and all the other places in the Middle East, right? This stuff is intensifying and it's, it's, it's scary. People just got their heads in the sand. And this is what the Bible says, man. It says it's going to come. It says the day of the Lord, meaning when God comes back, when, the, when this age ends, the end times, it's, Jesus is going to come like a thief in the night. And people are going to be in a stupor and unaware. And sometimes I got to check myself and be like, man, am I, am I ready? Am I, am, I, uh, am I just focused on, on this new thing I want or this thing that I need or this or that? Or, I, or am I really focused on what's coming? And, and I got to check myself because I think I'm, I'm very much wrapped up in my own things, in my own selfishness. You know, and how, how do we get ready? How do I get ready? You know, how, I guess, pursue God, pursue the spiritual things, right? Pursue, pursue the things that don't, pursue the things that are not temporal. Pursue the things that are not fleeting. That's what that verse says, right? Don't store up treasures on earth, but store up treasures in heaven. Well, what does that mean? What is a treasure in heaven? It's a, it's your spiritual experience. It's how much you love God. It's how much you read the word and how much you assimilate spiritually what you're reading and, and praying and, and, and taking time to absorb God and and I admit that I don't enough I really don't it's sad I don't know why I'm so it's I'm so wrapped up in selfishness and and everybody is this is our culture this is the American way. Selfishness, selfishness, selfishness. Gain, gain, gain. Personal gain, personal gain. Personal improvement. Self-improvement. Why are self-improvement books like the biggest sellers? Because everybody's trying to please themselves. Everybody's trying to improve this or that. And I'm not saying there's no place for that. But we're dying, man. We're passing away. We are deteriorating. How many? How much time do we have? And it's all gone. And people die all the time. People die unexpectedly. All of a sudden, this celebrity's dead. All of a sudden, this guy just died out of nowhere. All of a sudden, you know, and you don't know. You, you could have a health problem freaking tomorrow. You could have a health problem next week. It could be all over. We don't know when our time is. I mean, imagine you got all these plans, you got all these goals, and this is what they teach you in the self-improvement. Oh, set goals. You don't get what you want because you don't know what you want. Plan to succeed. You know, your, your plans won't succeed if you're not planning to succeed. You know, you're, you know all this stuff, right? And again, it's not, I'm not saying it's not helpful. It can be. Sure, it's good to write down goals and, and know what you want. Absolutely. But the point is, is that how much time do we waste with that stuff? How much time are we being selfish and pleasing ourselves and this, that, and the third, right? But it's it's coming, man, and, and are we ready? That's, that's a scary thought. It's a scary thought. Are we ready? Are we ready for it, you know? But I do miss good experiences, and I do miss a lot of... You know, I miss enjoying things. And maybe that's just my personal thing. Maybe it just seems like there's been a there's been a downward trend of people really wholesome activity. Wholesome people seem to be few and far between. We're just a different culture. We've just we've just transmorphed into something else. And I'm not saying it's all bad. There's some fun stuff, there's some funny stuff, there's some cool things, there's some intelligent people that help that are helpful and there's a lot of interesting stuff, but I would venture to say most of it is just, even though it's titillating, even though it's interest garnishing, and it's entertaining, and it's fun and funny, sure, you know, watch a million podcasts, and they're entertaining, wow, how fascinating is this, and, but how much is that, that, that stuff is really important, you know, I'd venture to say a great deal of it is just not that important, I mean, I, I think the, I think back on the best experiences of my entire life, they were all outside, you know, for the most part. Unless I was hooking up with a girl or something, which is, was inside, and those are nice experiences. But, you know, I remember as a kid, 
one of the funnest days of my life was when it snowed. I love the snow. I still love snow. I love the snow. I love going out walking real late at night after it snows. Probably one of my favorite things in the world to do. Because it's so quiet and everything's amplified because the snow you know, acts like a whatever you call it, like a, one of those rooms with you know, a music room or whatever, music studio room that where all this, because they have all these padding, so the sound is, you know, you can hear everything's amplified, you can just hear it, it's just it's so quiet, so quiet, you know, and you're out walking, you're the only person because the snow is fresh, you know, that's a that's an experience, and you're cold, but you're also exhilarated, and, and it's and it's exercise, and you walk for miles, and you're real tired when you get back, but it's you're, you feel so good, it's rejuvenating. People don't have that anymore, you know. But I, I remember one of the best days of my life when I was a kid. It snowed, and I had a bike, and I, I went and got my friend Aaron, and we went riding on our bikes in the snow, and it was just so fun. We were both enjoying this joyful, fun time. We were spinning out on our bikes, and we were just really enjoying. And it's like, that's, that was one of the best days of my life. Those days were the best days of my lives. You know, going out to like a water park. You know, it's, it's just, the, I just remember the, the, the sheer joy. You, you, you know, you weren't thinking of nothing. You weren't worried about nothing. You didn't have any anxiety about your future. Or like, oh my gosh, I'm going through this thing. Or I'm emotional. Or, you didn't have any of that. You were just enjoying the moment as a kid. And, and just that bliss, that bliss that you felt. It was sunny and everything was, everybody was happy and there was grass and you're just, you're at this water park and like, and it's simple. It's just something so simple. Like you're just going down water slides into the water, but I'd take that over, well, I don't know if I'd take that over a yacht, but, but I mean, in a way I would, if, if I probably would actually, because I'll bet I wouldn't be happy. I would, I, 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 I'd feel I feel pretty good. It'd be cool on a yacht. But I probably still have a lot of anxiety because of all the time I had to put in, all the things I had to do to get that yacht or whatever. Whereas if you just go go over to the water park, it's simple. There's there's just a beauty in simple things. Kind of like that movie, uh, American Beauty, when the guy's filming. And I love that. I, I know it's corny and people laugh at it and Family Guy mocked it and all this stuff, but... I love that part of that movie. It's it's true. It's true. We we miss those things. We miss the beauty and the art of everyday, seemingly mundane mundane things. You know, I used to go walking around all the time, and I'd see these cool little areas, or walk down an alley or something, and you just you catch a food, you, a food, you catch a mood, and you catch a feeling, right? And, and you just felt a certain way. And you can't really describe why or how you felt that way. But you just felt good. And it felt, you know, I don't know if it probably you know, has to do with dopamine or your neurotransmitters or something like that. But ultimately, you'd be out walking and, like, you'd see something cool. Or the sun would shine through the trees in a certain way. And it would, like, you'd see these cool houses. And there's just you just get this vibe or this feeling. And, like, I don't really get that. I haven't had that much in, in the Seattle area, but I had it all the time when I was a kid. I would go walk and I'd, get these, I'd catch these moods or catch these feelings. And maybe it has to do with, I don't know, maybe I drank too much, killed some brain cells or something. You know, I used to party in, in high school and I maybe did too much weed or something or whatever, but not to say that I'm endorsing any of that because I'm not at all, but... Um, You know, maybe it's all, it's all just has to do with neurotransmitters. I don't know, but it seems to me that, I mean, I'll experience it on a lesser degree. But when I was a kid, it, and I, it maybe it just has to do with the city. It has to do with Spokane. I don't know, the vibe was so different. Uh, and also, I think houses were unique back then. They had cool houses. I think that has a lot to do with it. I've always really liked houses. I, you know, just the, just the, the aesthetic value of like older houses and they were all like different they weren't all made the same there's all these different shapes and designs and and now it's just it's sickening what they're doing with houses it's all cookie cutter bs crap save money and they're all shaped the same way and if, of course if you live in an apartment you're basically just living in a glorified container box right which is sad 
you know, gosh, I wish everybody would have a house. I mean, if you own your own house, like, there's a certain feeling you get. I've never owned my own house, but I've lived in a house before. And I could just imagine how you'd feel if you owned your own house. It's just a, it's a sense of security, a sense of peace, you know. And you can't get that in an apartment. You can't get that in community living or shared housing. You can't get that. It's sad. And that's, that's the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to own our house. Our houses are supposed to be uniquely designed, painted the colors that we want, designed on the inside how we want them, the grass and, and the plants and the trees you know, outside how we want them. You were supposed to do that. Maybe have a vegetable garden in your backyard, have a clothesline, a, a cool fence. I mean, that there's stuff. those kind of things, you can't replicate that. It went away at some point. That you, there used to be a lore. I don't know if lore is the right word, but there used to be an aesthetic there on that type of thing, which is why there was such an emphasis on like, hey, go work and get your house and start your family because it's beautiful. Because you come home to your to your beautiful, pure wife, and you have these beautiful children who love you and, and and i mean how ideal is that that's why people are trying to go back to this trad life but they're just larping because you can't do it anymore because it's not our culture anymore I'm, okay i'm not saying you can't do it and probably you can sort of replicate it to some degree but it's just not our culture anymore we don't live in a trad culture anymore everything is different everything it's like a simulation or like a video game like when you change the culture, you change the layout, you change, I don't know what the word for it is, but you change the layout of the game, it, it affects everything. It affects the entire game. It's like, it reminds me of like these Japanese people who, what are they doing? I think the, there's cultures in Japan where they, they, they live action role play, they LARP as uh, certain <laughs> things. Like there's, there's groups of gangs in LA who are like pretending that they're like excuse me gangs in Japan who are like pretending that they're they're like gangs from LA they they don't really do it they're not really a gang they're not really a gang they're not act they're not doing anything bad they're just dressing the same way right that's live action role play there's there's groups of of youth in LA who excuse me in I don't care why I keep saying LA in Japan who dress like that movie Grease, right? They have their hair slicked back and and they got the leather jackets and it's like this subculture. It's like this little culture and they're, and they're live action role playing. They're live action role playing. And to me that type of live action role playing is exactly like what these traditional people are doing. You're pretending to be traditional. You're not really traditional because it's not a real culture. Now, I guess you could try to make it into it, but it's not the same thing. It's just not the same. Anyways, it's not that we can ever go back to that. It's not that, you know, I mean, things progress, things change. we got to accept it, move on, whatever, whatever. But I'm just saying there's things that you miss. Because I just remember being I just remember being a kid going, going over to my friend's house and, like, how unique it was because his house was always so unique. And then going over to this friend's house and how cool and unique it was because his house was so unique and we go into his backyard and it was unique and different from my other friend's backyard maybe you know this friend had a trampoline and it was su- we had a super fun day because we were jumping on a trampoline or this friend had a pool and we had a super fun day because we would go swim in his pool and it was just I mean you know that's what happens when you live life authentically but when you have these cooker cookie cutter homes and everybody's on the internet and you're just dead you're alive but you're dead there's no there's no uniqueness about your day. It's all the same. And I guess it's safe in that little comfort zone. It's safe in that little container that you call a life. That little shipping container that you call a life or whatever. But I just remember back in those days how it was fun. We'd just go walking down neighborhoods. We'd meet kids and we'd make new friends. Or sometimes we'd get in fights if, we, if the kids didn't like us. Or, you know, we'd have snowball fights. We did all that ideal shit that you hear about like kids used to do. We'd make snowmen. We'd go sledding. We, you know, every once in a while, somebody would like, you know, it only happened a couple times in my life, but somebody would have a car and they'd be driving out in the, not my friends, but somebody older would have a car and they'd be driving out in the snow and, and we'd, we'd get a sled and we'd hook a rope up to the car and they'd pull us around. I mean, I did shit like that. I had a freaking tree house. I had a freaking tree house for a couple of years. And it was cool. It was awesome. It was high up too. 
and then we moved a couple of years later and it was gone but I think it was up for a few years but I think they cut the tree down at some point for some reason but you know I, I'd, I'd build shit I'd make these little cool makeshift makeshift weapons and pretend I was like in the jungle or something and like I'd build forts and stuff I mean the cool shit that people used to do and I just don't think they do that crap anymore I really don't and it's sad and you know I sound like an old guy who's like but it's true you 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 just you just miss out on some on stuff and I can't imagine how much how, how much how great it was the 1930s to say like the 1970s or 80s people just had so many good experiences they go out and do stuff and you and you you learn how to meet people you learn how to talk to people you learn how to size people up and you, and you learn this hey I like this guy's vibe or I like this person's vibe and that's how you become friends that's you would just vibe with people or you would not vibe and you wouldn't be you oh, I don't like that guy's vibe and you stay away from it. it's like that those are things you lose and and you learn those things you learn when you actually go out and then if you don't go out you lose those things you don't have those skills or you don't you're just insulated and this is why a lot of kids they are just afraid when they go outside because they haven't developed social skills they haven't developed they don't live in that type of society anymore so it's it's, it's scary like oh is this person going to hurt me or uh, you know it's like that's not to say you didn't have those feelings back then but it's just different you were quicker you were you were more adept you were more now it's like you can tell when somebody's socially awkward because their, their, their head's down and they're all... But, it, but it's like everybody's like that in a way almost now. And I'm not saying they totally have lost the ability to socialize per se, but it's just a different... It's a different vibe. It's a different animal now. Because everything is compartmentalized. Everything is systematized. There's nothing that's unique. There's nothing that's can throw you a curveball. There's nothing that's like... You know, we used to have comedy kids back back in the day who were, like, funny. We used to get together and laugh and make jokes. And it just seems like everything is... I don't know. But I think there's a kind of comfort in that. There's a kind of comfort in the predictable, you know? And it can be addicting. But I think that if we're not all collectively leaving the Matrix... Because I think by default, you did, there was no Matrix back then. You know, people weren't behaving Machiavellian people weren't uh, manipulating to get what they wanted people weren't all super caught up in possessions it was just pure it was just pure kids would just wanted to have fun kids just wanted to laugh or go play or go do this or go do that or go skateboard or go play basketball or go play baseball or whatever all the cra all the fun crap we used to do but and nobody was plotting nobody was trying to like well i'm not saying that never happened but for the most part it was pretty pure anyways i'm just uh kind of rambling now but if you listen this far you're a saint i love you and um we'll see where things go man we'll see where things go i would just say my advice if you listen this far really is just store up your treasures in heaven if you can have good fun experiences while while we're still here and get and get what you can get while while you can get it but try not to be so caught up in everything and i don't know if i can beat it because i get caught up every day in so many different things but who knows life changes maybe with a different environment things would be different it's always possible for me to move. We'll see. And I hope y'all are doing well. You know, I hope y'all are, you know, enjoying what you can while it's still here. But I do think the world's changing for the worse. I do. I do think we're on a massive down, downhill slide. Just my opinion. You 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 could call me nihilistic, although that's not quite the right word because I believe in God. But you could call me pessimistic is the best is a better word, negative whatever. But I see what I see, and it's not that there, it's not there's, that there's still not opportunities to have fun or go out and do these things. There certainly are. Um, find those opportunities and, and and take and take take advantage of them and get what you get while you while you can still get it. And I'd say set aside you know the time of your day, you know, definite times in your day to soak in God and prepare for the future, prepare for the next life. 
the best way you can. It ain't true, man, what these atheists say. It ain't true that that this is the only life we got. It's not true. It's not it's not gonna go down that way. And the next, you know, we're gonna see. There's gonna be an there there is an afterlife. Guarantee it. Guarantee it, bro. Uh prepare for that. Live your life accordingly. You know, it's gonna be an afterlife. You know, figure it, you know, the Bible says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, right? Meaning, tread cautiously how, how you live this life. And, and live it in view of ultimate salvation, which is includes the afterlife, right? How are things going to go then? And that's my daily struggle, is I do not spend enough time doing that, and I need to. I need to improve in that, but I hope y'all do too. Anyways, appreciate you listening. Jay Lee Northwest Podcast. Peace.